So another interesting question from our members is how do you use resilience as a stress management technique? Well, that's an interesting question because we've seen definitely an increase in people wanting stress management. And so from my perspective and, and that of our team, even better than managing stress is don't get stressed in the first place, right? Easier said than done, I know, but prevention is definitely the best cure. So what I mean by that is if you build your resilience skills or your emotional fitness, then you can prevent stress from developing in the first place. And we know that your level of resilience isn't something that's fixed, that you're born with it and that's all there is. It is something that can grow and be developed. So I think of it like a tolerance level, if there's a bar. And the more you develop your resilience skills and your coping capacity, the more things you can handle before you hit that bar. And it takes a lot more for something to even register as a problem for you. So I'll give you an example. I haven't missed a lot of flights in my lifetime, but definitely when you travel a lot, it's something that's bound to happen sooner or later. And I remember quite a few years ago, I'm going back maybe a decade now, I had got some really bargain tickets for a flight from Sydney to the Gold Coast in Australia and I was really excited about it and I mucked up the timings and missed the flight and I was so upset by it. I was so stressed out by it. Um, I had to, you know, even though I got a new flight within an hour, which is amazing, and the loss wasn't that, the financial loss wasn't that much since I'd got such great tickets anyway. I, at that point, that ruined my day. <laughs> I was so frustrated with it all day and that impacted on my well-being. Recently, I had a somewhat similar situation. I was flying from Mexico to Malaga in Spain with a transit through Lisbon and the transit was quite tight, didn't make it. But over the years, with some experience, with some personal growth and development, um, I've come to approach things differently. So this was just an inconvenience, really. It was go to the counter, get the new flights. And honestly, the new flights, I had to wait hours and hours and hours in the airport. I had to go to Madrid and then do another transit. And I ended up getting home about 10 hours later than was originally planned. And yet my experience of it was completely different. It was, I was my thinking about it was completely different. It was, oh, well, this is what it is. How am I going to use this time as effectively as possible? So get some work done, contact some friends, stay in touch, uh, do a little bit of shopping. And it didn't ruin the day. It was just life. It just happened. So we move on and we go to next. So this kind of situation wasn't worth losing my peace over. But why I could handle that much better was because I had developed, developed a greater level of resilience. And that basically came down to how I think about it inside my own head. And that is how resilience is a stress management technique. You don't do it after you're stressed. You build that muscle beforehand, either voluntarily by you know, learning new things, finding, listening to other people who have been through challenges, how they approach things, etc., or Sometimes you do it involuntary <laughs> through life itself, throwing you challenges and you're just having to build that muscle. I hope that answers the question. Hi, I'm Emmy Golding, Director of Psychology for the Workplace Mental Health Institute. We hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. We have more and more videos being released each week. So when you subscribe, you'll get a notification letting you know when a new one's just been published. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't miss out on this vital information for yourself, your colleagues and your loved ones.